ಹಾರ Okay, I've tur- uh the studio's been locked. Uh the cu- windows have been covered with uh with pla- black paper because once again after a long absence we have we this is AML product news with uh, none other than your editor of Model Railroad News, Tony Cook. Hello, hello. This is the sound of my voice. Yeah. Can I does anybody call you Anthony? Um Well, you know, my name is Charles Anthony Cook. So if people don't know me, or if I, you know, when we used to get those like phone calls for trying to sell you stuff, hi, may I speak to Charles? He's not here right now. Because yeah. you you either want money or you're trying to get money from me. Anthony usually is mom when she's not happy with me when All I right. was a kid. You would get that, Anthony. And <laughs> it, yeah, drop what you're doing, get in here and find out what is the problem. Yeah. All right, so this is maybe something you don't want released to the public. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about it. You know, maybe I'm going to, you know, things will be happening now that where people will now be able to piece other things together. But for me, this makes a lot of sense because when you and I were uh, on our road trip and uh, we were pulled over by a Kansas state trooper for other uh, uh, activities that don't need to be uh, discuss- discussed here, But uh, when he came back with your license, he just simply said, okay, Chuck, let's see if we can take it a little easy out there. <laughs> Did he say that? I don't remember that. <laughs> All I remember is it was like the best. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, which, which reminds me, we've had some harassment amongst our friends recently. On yes. Who would, who would, you know, because there was a new world's record set in late 2019 for the annual cannonball sea to shining sea dash from yeah. new york to R- redondo redondo beach, beach. Yep. and uh we've 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 taken some heat that some of our cohorts think they would do better in said race yeah and given the fact that we've actually well i mean our trip out uh, we were in training for it yeah so we're we're i feel a step ahead of them Oh, absolutely. Uh, now, the, uh, uh, we don't want to mention any names, but you're speaking of our friend Adam Pinellas, who is a conductor on the California Zephyr, wonderful uh, young man, and uh, Clem Harris, who is a locomotive engineer on the Southwest Chief. Yeah. And, and uh, they've uh, uh, proclaimed that they think they could do it faster than us. And, he, and he, yeah, and here's what I see as the problem. I don't doubt that they would start out in a hurry. Like I, Like, I feel like they would pull away from us Right, but like somewhere on the western edge of Pennsylvania, we would have passed them because they'd be pulled over because they just don't have the the years behind them of charisma and yeah. and, and life that would help them in certain situations. I agree. I think that yeah, that determination or that stamina, you got to be an old guy to do that. And I don't think either of those two they wouldn't do. It. You know, I mean, I don't want to start laying down. You know, I I don't want to get into a, a competition, but I really think we could take him in an old beat up like Lincoln Versailles with like an old 302 that's Lincoln transmission fluid that I think we'd be able to beat him in a car like that, let alone taking the caddy out. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the number one thing you've uh, when, when by the time you get to my age, you've learned you've trained yourself for years and years on how to hold it. Oh, yeah. And that's key. If you're going to do a cross country record run. Or, or you're going to be competing against somebody. You got to know how to hold it. Yeah. I don't remember. In fact, our whole trip, we chased that big boy all day. I don't remember taking any stops. Yeah, well, see, that's the thing. You see, you didn't know what was going on. When you were busy yeah. photographing the big boy, you, you didn't. See, the thing is. think about it. Yeah, the thing, the other thing is you got to have a partner where you don't need to think about where, you know. Where, where Adam will be going, well, you know, he, he, he pulls in to get a Diablo sandwich. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and and he's and he can't be thinking well where did clem go right no. oh yeah no 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 chance <laughs> i'm gonna have a diablo sandwich and a dr pepper. dr pepper <laughs> i don't even know what a diablo sandwich is 
You know, I looked that up a couple of times because it's not a chain restaurant or anything that he goes into. And I can't remember. I think I think the closest thing I found to it online is it's basically like a hamburger with hot sauce. Oh, okay. On it. That's a, I guess, but yeah. And you know, the way Jackie Jackie Lee should have gotten an Oscar for the way he like inhales that sandwich. Yeah. Like two or three bites and it's just almost like it's running, you know, and Bert ends up having to clean his tie off or something, dipping his napkin into a Dr. Pepper. Yeah. But yeah, that's what a classic. And there was what a great a Hal Needham. There was a great do- hour and a half documentary about the making of Smokey and the Bandit with Hal Needham. And uh, I thought it was going to be not watchable and it was very watchable. And it turned out that after that scene, Burt Reynolds refused to be in another scene with uh, with uh, Jackie Gleason. And it was rumored that the reason he didn't want to is because he didn't think he could come, keep up with him from an acting standpoint, from a character well, standpoint. Really? Yeah. That document, that's a tremendous documentary. That was from 2016. And the, the documentary is called The Bandit. And I think I saw it on uh, maybe Amazon Prime. But yeah, and I was just telling my little brother about that recently. I said, man, if, you, if you've never seen it, you got to see that documentary called the bandit and i think it's more than just isn't it it's kind of hal needham in general how he's stunt man to director yeah yeah it covers i gotta watch it again that was a very good very good program and I, you know what if we're gonna throw down a, a challenge to uh adam pinellas and clem harris i think before i think before anybody crosses the start the, the starting line you got to have a theme song oh easily yeah you know like if you have no theme song that you that, that can be played in the background forget it Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and those guys are going to come up with some of the, you know, some me- metallic rock thing, and it's just it won't work. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, so we're going to talk about something really cool. We're going to talk about something really cool that was just announced by Rapido Trains, Jason Schron of Rapido Trains, and you have all the info, and you're gonna, and I'm going to ask questions because I've never heard of this thing before. I do have the info on, you know, Jason and Rapido Trains has done so many exciting things and you've had him on the podcast before. Uh, Rapido is, you know, based in Canada and Jason's stuff, he's done the United Aircraft Turbo. Uh, he did the LRC, you know, the real sleek looking kind yeah. of Star Trek space shuttle looking uh, train. Yeah. And he's done tons of just regular prototype stuff from like the FL9 uh, EMDE unit variant. He's got Alco PAs coming, which will probably be the best that's ever been done for what's, you know, an all time favorite PA1, PA2s, as well as uh, the booster units are coming. So check out his website for info on those. Uh, but Jason has announced a new and exciting passenger train project, and he's taking reservations through March 17th on the Roar version Turboliner. Roar, R O H R. Correct. I I have never even heard of this thing. Really? Well, you remember the first, the UA Turbo? That's the one with uh, had like the the top. It looked almost like little dome cars on each end of it, and CN operated it. Amtrak operated some. That was United Aircraft Corporation, the UAC Turbo. It was a late nineteen sixties high speed project. Between Canada and the U.S., it's a gas turbine yes. powered set. That one is late '60s. Then Amtrak in '73, I believe it was, went to France and got sets of their turbo liners and brought them over to the U.S. Those trains operated uh, Milwaukee through Chicago to St. Louis. In fact, that's one of the first Amtrak rides I ever took as a little kid was on the turbo in Illinois. And those turbo trains ran for a while in Illinois. They ran out east as well. And then in the mid-70s, Amtrak went to Roar, R-O-H-R. And what I see on them is they were an aerospace manufacturing company in California. And Roar built turbo trains similar to the French design. They're a little sleeker, their version of the turbo. And it's that, that usual setup of power cars on both ends. Then there's a coach on next to the power cars. And then like a cafe or a food service car in the center. So I think the basic setup is always kind of like this mirrored setup, uh, five car train. So cafe in the middle, coaches on both sides, power units on each end. Train doesn't have to be turned around. So it's got, you know, the ability to run from either direction. And the Roar turbos went to work in 76, 77 for Amtrak. I think they mostly ran in the Northeast area. 
And this is the train that Jason is talking about doing for HO scale. Holy macro. I think it'd be very neat. I'm excited by it. The other, that French turbo liner was done by Joff, I think is how you say their name. J-O-E-U-F. Uh, that they made one in the 1970s. Uh, but it's been out of production for years. And then this Roar version, I don't think there was ever even brass. This would be the first time it's ever been done in, I think, any scale, basically. It's, but, but HO is what I believe Rapido's got. You know, it, 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 again, this is uh, to see the interest from hobbyists that he's taking reservations. So, you know, if, if the interest is not there, the project will not go forward. But if he gets enough reservations, then there's going to be this fantastic turbo model to go with some of the other wonderful trains he's done, like the LRC and the UA Turbo. Yeah, people are going to go nuts for this because it's uh, it's white. It's a blue, white, and red, red, white, and blue. Yes. And uh, man, I mean, just the looks of it, people are going to go crazy for this. They're going to they're going to want to have one. You know, a lot of people are going to want to have one for their layout. You know, people that aren't necessarily uh, strict prototype modelers that are modeling a certain time, certain place. A lot of other people are going to want to have one of these just because of the attraction of, of how unique it was. I think uniqueness always makes models more appealing to people, too. Oh, I agree. Yeah, as you say, you don't even if it's something like, well, I don't model that era or I don't model those areas like the Northeast Corridor where it ran. You get a really neat train set like that, and it's something you just got to have. It's like, that's really cool. And mm -hmm. Rapido, my gosh, their packaging, I mean, every uh, the stuff they put together, it's always exciting just to see their new models come out, just because you can tell Jason really is a fan and really is into this, and his team of people up there are all kind of cut from that same cloth. This is fun stuff for them to do, and you can see it from the packaging all the way through to the product that this is neat stuff done well. Oh, yeah, that's the thing. It's from one end to the other, and man, I... This thing will just jump off the show. I wonder how many, I wonder what his uh, thresh, obviously he wouldn't, he doesn't tell you those things because it's, those are uh, uh, things that need to be kept uh, inside the company. But I wonder what the threshold is for, for reservations for him to go ahead and do it. I don't know. I mean, it'd be interesting to see. You can go to their website, rapidotrains.com and get more information on it. And, you know, your hobby dealer as well would have information on that. But, you know, he's done this kind of, these things before. And it really shows the interest in these things or his ability to pick fun projects because, you know, like he did the uh, he did the coaches that later served in the Rio Grande ski train. Yes. And when he announced those, he said that if the reservations were strong enough for the ski train version, that he would do like the correct, unique snack coaches. And sure enough, the reservations were there and he's doing the different or unique car that was in the Rio Grande ski train beginning in the late 1980s will be included in that set. Uh, uh, it's, I wonder, um, I had a really good question. Don't tell me. Oh yeah. I wonder how many real, uh, how many actual prototypes units of this were built? Any idea? The Roar train sets, uh, they, seven of those. So there would be, there were five car sets. Roar built seven of them, delivered in 76, 77. And I think they run just into the 21st century, like 2000, 2001, 23, somewhere in there is when they, they stopped. So they lasted a lot longer than the Canadian version, the UA <clears> one. <throat> yeah, because I think the UA one, I forget. I mean, Amtrak didn't have a lot of good luck with it. I know they had some fire problems with them too a couple of them burned up and i can't remember if they all end up back on via or what but yeah those i want to say the canadian turbos or the ua turbo is pretty much about a 10-year deal so yeah, these, yeah. these make these make it a good long run the uh to me the the ua turbo uh i mean it was very famous in canada it was very it was very with the times but it always reminded me of the boston red sox you know it just was kind of like yeah, this isn't going to win anything. <laughs> <laughs> did you, have you did you ever ride it? Have you ridden any of those? Like I, the LRC. I I have a great story about riding the turbo train back in the seventies. I uh, my dad and his friend and me and several other people were going to a division meet, an NMRA division meet that was going to be about forty. It was about 35, 40 miles east of Toronto. And somebody had taken the initiative to 
get us tickets and to get this train to stop in in uh, Bowmanville, Ontario. And uh, so, you know, a bunch of us piled on, probably 20 or 30 or 40 of us, piled onto this train. And uh, it pulled up in the, up to Bowmanville. And I mean, it, was, it was great for me. I was a young guy. And, man, it was just the best. And uh, we pull in and we get off the train. Everybody's having a great time. There's buses there to pick us up to where the division meet is. And uh, one fella, we are, we're on the bus now. And we're going to wherever it is we're going to. And there starts to become a flurry of activity with one fella and somebody running this, this uh, trip. Turns out the guy was headed to Montreal and had decided that there would, because we were all getting it off, this must be Montreal. <laughs> and we were, <laughs> and he was still about 250 miles short of Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy had gotten off the train and now was complaining that, you know, like, how is he going to get to Montreal? And, we're, you know, I remember the old, uh, all the guys kind of going, beats us you only went 35 40 miles you know <laughs> and he was convinced this turbo train when it speeds that were so fast that you know literally within 30 minutes you'd go the 300 miles from toronto to montreal oh so i thought he was there already yeah huh? very, very hey. star trekkyish, you know how exciting wow yeah so that was my experience with it you know so it was a but it's a cool train i mean it's a very cool looking train and this one now that uh uh jason and rapido trains is doing like boy i bet you i bet you he'll be flabbergasted with the response he gets it ought to be so awesome you know he did the ua turbo t at least two runs of it and i have one of those in amtrak livery and it's they're such neat sets you know be, you know i'm a big collector so you can sell me on any of that stuff. Like I've got the Concorde, like Aero Train and M10,000 Union Pacific City of Salina and the Pioneer Zephyr that those kind of things are just too much for a collector to, to pass up. So yeah, obviously this Roar Turbo is a must have for my collection. And I know a lot of other guys will be the same way, but R Repeat will do such a neat job. And you know, he does neat stuff like his UA Turbo. He did a soft cover book that's in it. And I think for the, the tempo trains he did a little history book on those too and again for kind of that 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 collector hobbyist end of things that's always fun to open a package up like that and find like oh look at this that you know he put together like a whole history on the model or on the prototype to go with the model i wonder i wonder how he how I, it's amazing how all of these manufacturers i wonder how he found this and I just wonder if a light bulb went off in his head one day or if he's been sitting on this for a while because it's such a unique model. I'm surprised nobody else has done it before. But I guess part of the thing of it is uh, Rapido Trains and Jason have set themselves up with two factories of their own. So it's all done in-house. Yeah, and I think that makes that, yeah, the, these kind of projects are things that he's able to tackle and do well. And again, he's got that, just that enthusiasm. I mean, you know, as you see, you know, you've talked to him and I talk to him frequently. And I mean, he's, he's a fun guy that this is a neat business. You know, it's a good fit for him. <laughs> yeah. I wonder, and the, the maximum speed of these trains was 125 miles an hour or 201.2 kilometers. And uh, I wonder how many of these, they, they held 296 passengers. I wonder how many of these ran anywhere near that 125 mile an hour mark. Hmm. I mean, I wouldn't think on Amtrak. You, know, yeah. you, you, always, you always hear that stuff, but you know, Amtrak in general, 79, you know, miles an hour for I think most things. But I mean, it's hard to tell. I mean, maybe in the Northeast they did. I don't. I again, that, and that's part of the fun too when these kind of things get announced, is to start doing that research or looking for books or other information is one of those things that always strikes me both for work to be able to present the information like in model railroad news, but then just for myself, when I see something like this announced, I'm like, Oh yeah, I know that. Or I think I know about that. And it's like, you know, I start looking for books and magazine articles and where can I find out more on this? You know, you're like a little kid, suddenly that excitement of, Oh, yeah. tell me more. Yeah. Yeah. I bet you, I bet you Jason's hit another home run with this one. Absolutely. Well, as, as I say, you know, it's, it's a five unit set. You, you got to get the reservations in, in order to hit the date that he announced to me was March 17th of 2020. And he's going to look at the response in to see what from hobby dealers and then direct reservations on his website. And, you know, if, if everybody's got their hand raised, he'll go forward with the project. So definitely 
think think about it if you're interested. Well, and you know the crazy thing is the crazy thing about this whole deal is uh, this is the action. This is the first podcast of the new decade on the AML uh, Radio Network. It is a new decade. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Wow! The, How the, about that? Yeah, the decade. The decade. The twenty. The tw- <laughs> the twenties is three days old. And we're already, the AML Nation, the AML Network is on the cutting edge of what's happening in model railroading. The roaring 20s. Yep. There you go. I there love it. There you go. I love it. I, I, we, need a, we need a snappy ending for model. You, Tony, can I, can, I speak for, can I speak to you from the fans of the podcast? Please do. Uh, people miss your model railroad news and your uh, XF2 files. Or X2F, well, which is it? XF2 or X2F? X2F. X2F. Yeah, yeah, based on based on that wonderful coupler. Yes. Uh, so people miss these. What yes, I, I yep, yep. I, I got an email recently from a Model Railroad News subscriber that asked me about them, yep. Yeah, and I had somebody ask me just the other day, well, it wouldn't be the other day, it was about two weeks ago, that uh, wanted to know about if you would ever do any more of the X2F files because they, they liked them. So, like, what do we, what do we have to do here at head office? To okay, we understand that as an editor of Model Railroad News, your time is limited. Uh, you're always busy. You're always looking for that next great uh, product to uh, promote and let the modelers know about. But what you know, could we could we look for maybe uh, once a month, maybe? I think let's shoot for that for this decade of the twenties and see yeah. if I can do it. But we got our great, we got this great kickoff here, product news wise. I mean. You can't beat that. This is an excellent January product news to find out about this project from Rapido. So there's our product news, and then we'll work on a X2F. All right. That's a done deal. All right. I, I, you know what? And let me just say this uh, from uh, AML headquarters here in Busted Knuckle, Kentucky, uh, from the 48th floor of the Stuart L. Sterling building. Uh, uh, I hope that the, the 20s is everything and more that you were either you dreamed of as a young as a young boy. It's another Lincoln Homer.